Several months ago, I came on here and told all of you that the WWE had a major problem with their main event for WrestleMania 31, and that is, frankly, that they didn't have one, and that the only viable option that I saw to save the main event of WrestleMania 31, and perhaps save that show, was to do Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, and then have Seth Rollins cash in and be the champion at the end of the show. I know this angered and infuriated a lot of the Daniel Bryan nuthuggers, but I was right. When you look at the dynamics of everything that happened with that great main event at WrestleMania 31, it wouldn't have worked if it was Daniel Bryan. It had to be Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, and it had to be Seth Rollins, frankly, cashing in on Roman Reigns. It had to be done. It had to go that way. And it did go that way. And the WWE deserves a lot of credit in my mind for understanding the direction that they needed to go, even though they kind of created their own bad situation to begin with, and they shouldn't be let off the hook for that. They figured out what needed to be done, and then they did it. And they did. And what happens? They created a one-of-a-kind, unique WrestleMania moment. They validated and upgraded that Money in the Bank briefcase because now not only does it give you a title shot at a time of your choosing for up to one year, you could cash that in at any point in time up to and including WrestleMania, something that had never been done before until Seth Rollins did it. Now it creates a little bit of an element there of you have to tune into the pay-per-view to watch because you don't have to sit there and just wait until Raw or SmackDown to see that briefcase be cashed in. It could happen at any time anywhere, up to and including the biggest show of the year and the biggest match of the year, the main event at WrestleMania. And all the while, when I looked at what happened with that main event at WrestleMania 31, it was great. It created a new main event star in Seth Rollins, just like that. He left with the title and did it in a memorable, memorable, productive, successful way. You also protected another future main event star in Roman Reigns by having him lose. It's one of the few times where you actually protect a character by having him lose because if he would have went all the way with Roman Reigns, then it could have created a disaster. The best thing to do was to back off of him a little bit, as I had been advocating for, frankly, for months. Some of you might forget that. It also allows you to protect the Brock Lesnar monster. Lesnar gets the title off of him without him actually having to lose. So it's a win-win-win, genius, all the way, fucking round type of thing, as I envisioned several months ago when I talked about it. And that's why I think Seth Rollins makes such a perfect WWE World Heavyweight Champion right now. He's the best option that they have. He's the right choice to be the champion post-WrestleMania 31. Not Roman Reigns, not Brock Lesnar, certainly, and not anybody else on the roster. Here's what I love about the thought of Seth Rollins being the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. I know buckle your seatbelts. I'm doing a positive video about something pertaining to the WWE. Who knows when that'll come around again. But the first thing this does is it gets the belt back on TV. I know a lot of you have been brainwashed into believing that Brock Lesnar being off of TV for three or four months at a time with the title, it was a good thing. No, it wasn't a good thing because he went from being a special attraction to being no attraction at all, with that title becoming no attraction at all, to when he did come back, he was the wrong type of attraction. It's one thing to not have your champion appear every single week, but to not have your champion appear for three to four months at a time, that's foolishness, especially when you look at the way the WWE product has been built for years and years. It revolves around that world title. When you remove that world title from the equation, everything else underneath it kind of goes into shambles. Now you avoid that. You put the belt back on TV where it needs to be at this point in time around a guy that is going to be there, the guy that is going to be on TV every single week. It also gives you proper follow-up to a nine-month story involving Seth Rollins and his turn on the shield and aligning himself with Triple H and the authority. It validates that monster Seth Rollins push that kind of bordered almost on a Randy Orton type of force. Not all the way, but somewhat. But you had to finish off that push. 
You had to validate that push to do all of this with Seth Rollins, to do all of these things with Seth Rollins and not have him cash in successfully and not have him become the WWE World Heavyweight Champion would have been a ridiculously poor decision and would have just made everything you had done with Seth Rollins an incredible waste of time. It also helps to keep the authority important and relevant on TV. Unfortunately, that means Kane and Big Show to a degree, yes. But you need a purpose and a reason other than being the bosses for Triple H and Stephanie McMahon to be integrally involved in the show. Now that they have the champion in their fold for the time being, it gives them a reason to be important, to be relevant, to be on the air. At this point in time, when it's the WWE, they can use any and all weapons at their disposal in their arsenal. And Triple H and Stephanie are two of the best weapons they got, whether we always want to realize it, see it, or believe it or not. And as a result, now with Seth Rollins being that champion, you can continue to deploy those weapons effectively each and every single week in Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. And frankly, at this point in time, when I look at the WWE and their product and the roster, I have to say that even though traditionally to me the WWE has always worked best when there's a babyface champion and the heel start chasing the babyface champion, whereas every other wrestling company is pretty much its best when it's the heel champion being chased by the babyface. At this point in time, it's frankly better to have a heel champion. Because when you look at the different sides of the fence, the babyface side of the fence, ironically enough now, is much more loaded up than the heel side is. I mean, you've got Cena over here. You've got Lesnar over here. You've got Orton over here. You've got Reigns over here. You've got Ambrose over here. What the hell do you have on the heel side? Bray Wyatt? <laughs> I mean, seriously, the babyface side is so much more loaded right now than the heel side is, which is something that is very rare from a WWE standpoint. Henceforth, as a result, you need somebody that can work with the most potential options. And to do that, you need a heel champion to work with all these different babyfaces. Now, having that heel champion means that you can have all of these different types of options. You have Orton, you have Reigns, you have Lesnar, you have Ambrose, you have Cena, you have Daniel Bryan. You have many more options with a Seth Rollins as champion as opposed to, let's say, a Roman Reigns as champion with not a lot of heels to really work with. And frankly, a Brock Lesnar who wouldn't be around, one. And then two, even if he was around, who in the hell does he really have to work with? Seth Rollins is the best option right now as a heel world champion. What else it also does, too, that I think is incredibly important is that it helps validate this WWE youth movement. I've stated on numerous occasions that to me, if I'm running the WWE right now, I'm building this company around a combination of guys. And mostly they're going to be guys under 30. It's going to be the Reigns's, the Ambrose's, the Rollins, you know, the guys like Bray Wyatt, the guys like Cody Rhodes, the guys like Big E's, because I want to spend those next two or three years to get them off to snuff by the time they're 29, 30, 31, 32, whatever the case might be. I've still got years upon years of the peak of their career where they are accomplished performers and they are established top guys. I'd rather devote more of my energies to those type of guys than the guys that are already in their mid-30s that who knows in today's business by the time they get to 40 what the hell they're going to be with the WWE. And when you put a guy like Rollins in this type of spot and he has this type of success, it can only help to validate for somebody in particular that needs this type of validation to understand what needs to happen in the Vincent K. McMahon to say, okay, Rollins is a champion. I can trust him. He hasn't been so bad. Now maybe I can trust Reigns. Now maybe I can trust Ambrose. Now maybe I can trust Bray Wyatt. This could have an incredible trickle-down effect throughout the roster for many years to come. I mean, at the end of the day, Vince McMahon had to pull the trigger on Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 31. It was his decision and his decision alone at the end of the day. I mean, somebody was able to convince him enough that this was the direction they needed to go, and he had enough confidence in Seth Rollins to be able to make that decision and pull that trigger. Some of you might say it was just a lack of confidence in Roman Reigns, but he still had to have enough confidence in Seth Rollins to be able to pull the trigger. Otherwise, he would just have Brock Lesnar retain. You just had this big, huge hullabaloo about Brock Lesnar resigning with the UFC, or not resigning with the UFC, resigning with WWE, and he still went with Seth Rollins as a champion. Now Vince has put his trust in that guy. Maybe it will slowly mean over the next year or two he will put his trust in a couple of other guys, and we could really see this product improve by leaps and bounds. See, I'm being optimistic and hopeful. Imagine that. To me, this also can help validate what Triple H has been doing with NXT as well. A lot of the hardcore fans really want to you know, praise 
NXT and praise Triple H and what he's done and compared to what they had going down in FCW, it deserves to be praised. It's a much more functional and productive developmental system, in my opinion, in terms of the way it's structured and in terms of the way it's presented and the way it's organized and structured. There's just so many things are better about it. Now that you've got a guy that's come from that NXT system, not the just FCW system, but the NXT system as well, and Seth Rollins, it can't hurt that NXT program, that NXT developmental territory at all. It can only help it. Maybe if Vince could sit there and say, well, you know, because he's going to completely forget anything Seth Rollins ever did before for years and years in the independent scene, we know this is damn good and well true. This is going to be like, well, of course. Triple H, you signed him, but it was my idea all along, and now he's under our fold, and this works, and da-da-da, and all this other crap. Now maybe invest even more resources in NXT. It could really help elevate and validate that brand as well. When I look at Seth Rollins right now as a WWE World Heavyweight Champion, it makes perfect sense. Now, there are times I don't particularly like the way he's booked. I think at times they make him a little too dependent on help, a little too smarmy, a little too chicken shit for my taste. However, that can work right now because they need a heel champion. They needed to validate Rollins' push. They needed to do so many things. And having Seth Rollins be the WWE World Heavyweight Champion does so many things that this company needed. I applaud the WWE for making the decision that they made at WrestleMania 31. The same decision that I said several months ago is the one that they needed to make, that they should make, that they had to make, that they had no choice to make. And hopefully now everybody understands what I was talking about months ago. The dynamics of having Daniel Bryan in that match with Brock Lesnar wouldn't have worked. Daniel Bryan being the world champion wouldn't have worked either. Because again, as I've pointed out here, what were your options? What were your alternatives? What were you going to do with Daniel Bryan once he became the champion? And same thing goes with Roman Reigns as well. To those that say, well, Roman should have won that match. I say, no, he shouldn't have. For months, I have argued that Seth Rollins should have won that match. Because again, what were you going to do with Roman Reigns once he won the title? Where were the options there? Once you got past a Seth Rollins, you were going to have to do a bunch of different character flips and turns in order to give Reigns potential opponents. Now, when you look at somebody like Seth Rollins, you just easily slide him in, and you've got programming for the next six to eight months as champion. Orton, Reigns, Lesnar, you can always go back to Ambrose. Are you really going to be upset if they go back to Ambrose versus Rollins this time over the world title? I don't think so. Seth Rollins is a perfect, perfect WWE World Heavyweight Champion at this point in time. He's the best guy for the job at this particular moment. And I'm glad the company went with him. I'm glad Seth Rollins has decided to not tweet out any more pictures of himself to where he could have potentially cost himself this opportunity. And I hope by God that he makes the most of it because he's been given a really good opportunity. And he really has the opportunity, frankly, to be a big time star and really be one of the more productive WWE World Heavyweight Champions that we've seen in quite some time. 